411 Live. Where you can learn about issues that affect us every day. Stay the world. 411 Live. Real people, real talk. Made to help people in our community in every way. For your girl. Back to another edition of the 411 Live. Real people, real talk. I'm Beverly Taylor. You are actually joining us for part two of a discussion that we've already had and the topic a thin line between dancing and sex trafficking. If you missed part one, I invite you to listen to that one because we had a very interesting discussion. Joining me to talk about this topic uh, again is Bianca Williams. She is a, an entrepreneur and an ex strip club dancer, and also joining us, included in this discussion, because he wasn't with us in part two, but he has graciously joined us for this one, is Kima Hamilton, and he is the owner of Retreat Event Center, and he has also been um, involved with uh, strip clubs for mm, about 20 years, 20 years. Okay, so they are joining us now, and we were are going to continue our discussion and let's kind of go back a little bit, just so everybody is uh, on the same page who did not listen to part one. Bianca, we talked a, a lot uh, of your backstory. And you started dancing in street clubs at the age of 17, right? Yes. And got out at 21? Yes. So you had that span of time, and you saw a lot of things. Now, the, our topic is a thin line between dancing and sex trafficking. You didn't go across that line into sex trafficking. Yes. But you saw girls who did. Yes. So what did that look like again? It was a scary situation because it could happen at any moment. You can easily be going from a strip club to the streets in a quick second. Um, it was scary because so many people have in their mind they can go in this game, get some money, and get out. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, when drugs, alcohol, pimps, and different things like that get involved, it makes it even more harder. Okay. So, Kima, bringing you in now, um, and I said you had been involved in strip clubs for like 20 years. And that topic, a thin line between dancing and sex trafficking, have you seen that? Yes. Yes. Yes, I I've seen I've seen a uh, thin line between... Uh, dancing and sex work mm -hmm. um i think trafficking for me is sometimes trafficking is it the just the language right now is a euphemism for sex work mm -hmm. and it, for me it's important to 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 make the, the difference between the two the distinction yeah yes ma'am uh, the distinction between the two and so you know there are, there are um pred predators in that environment like like lurking and waiting to prey the way that I would explain it, like there are there are environments where that is welcomed, mm -hmm. right? There are owners who you know have that who have that predatory relationship with with whoever's in there trying to to you know um, prey, I guess, on right. on some of some of the humans in that environment. And then you have environment, and then you have certain cultures and environments where that just is it isn't it, it, it isn't accepted. Um, so for me, it's it's you know important to kind of sidestep absolute terminology yeah. and and kind of really be um lock in on you know the specific conversation so right, right. there is a there is a thin line and 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 when you think about the sex like in a, a building where um humans are are naked right like it, it, w it will be there will be a thin line between um you know where the where the boundaries are or at least there, there will constantly be pushing on, on those boundaries. Absolutely. There'll be a constant push on those boundaries. Absolutely. I just want you, uh, for our listeners and our viewers, I just want to um, make sure that I invite you into this conversation. So if you hear something or you have some comments or suggestions or uh, anything like that, send them our way because we welcome them and we want you to be a part of this discussion. I also, you make a great point because Sex trafficking, when we talk about that, we're talking about force, threat, coercion, that those elements are involved. Uh, if they're not involved and you have uh, a person who is saying they want to be a partner in this, they want, they want to give you 
their money and they want you to manage their money, then that's different. Mm -hmm. So that's a good point to make. Um, I also mentioned, and you kind of um, touched on it, I have read where um, some strip clubs like to work with sex traffickers because the sex trafficker will get the girl there on time and make sure she's available anytime. And so it's just a, an easy kind mm -hmm. of thing for them. So that that partnership is there. Um, and so you're saying that you have seen that element. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. I, I personally have had, you know, the luxury of working in environments where that's that's frowned upon mm -hmm. and, and 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 addressed aggressively. Um, but I'm not I'm not I'm not naive. Like I understand that there are there that those dynamics do exist. Yeah. Yeah. And for me that's some of what but why I'm that's some of why I'm here. Like, you know, I've been in in this particular I've sat in the seat in the DJ booth for like twenty years and it's it's um sometimes I, I it's more important to me to have one on one conversations around around this dynamic. Mm -hmm. Um you get, I just feel you get a lot further. Um because because you know, out in, in the in the greater ecosystem, I think a large part of um, how how this conversation is framed already tell people you know let's gives people it's already sends the signal of um, how you're supposed to feel about it, and so we just kind of loop to loop around a lot of rhetoric. In, in my personal opinion, but for me, it was um, important to come today to at least offer um, to the conversation you know the idea that. I think when 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 we swat the entire conversation away, we we're also um, creating some of some of um, the dynamics that you know I think become problematic, and we would agree are problematic. Right. Um, but I'm not sure if we can see the correlation in in our our consistent approach to to addressing those things as a part of the problem. Right. And before uh, the camera was turned on, I also mentioned that I had read where there was a coalition of strip club owners who came together and said, we're going to form this group and make this pledge that we will not accept or uh, empower sex trafficking in our establishments. So I gather that that's kind of the perspective that you have seen and that you're kind of promoting. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. So you said in 20 years you've been a DJ? Yes, ma'am. How did that come about? Um... <laughs> as you know I, I was um it was interesting i went to i went to to college for radio and tv broadcasting uh -huh. so technically it was my first job out of college and and i used a lot of a lot of the skills that i learned in college around broadcasting so i know what i know what buttons to turn and i know how to announce and right right um how to how you know the run of show? It's kind of it's kind of interesting, but a, but a lot of the core skill sets that I that I acquired in college were were what made you know me um, successful. And I'll use that term initially. And then I think another another reason I've been able to sit in that seat for twenty years is I did. I grew up in the church. I grew. I was raised by my mother, grandmother, great grandmother, um, favorite aunt, aunts, and and great aunties. And so for me. You know, my coworkers have always been, you know, humans. Like they've always been proper noun. So, you know, from um, that particular perspective, um, from from the DJ booth, I have a lot of control over over the environment, right? The music that will be played, um, the the voice that I make when I when I announce this this entertainer, uh -huh. right? Using the word entertainer, um, will 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 shift how you how you see this this person I'm presenting who's making who's all, who's making a choice to share themselves with you, right? Like so. Um, I have a lot of influence on how this is even going to go, right? Like I can, I can celebrate you for just um, for going to 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 break a big build, so only so you could throw it at this person, or I can, I can, I can kind of send a signal through through comedy or whatever um, that you probably should just give them the big bill, right? Like imagine if you just gave them the big bill, why, why walk over there and get changed just so you could throw it? Okay. And and in in all of that, recognizing that those are also some of the um, influences that we that we're sorting through collectively across the board. Like we we all we're all um, have been heavily influenced by you know I think this patriarchal energy, right? And so um, shock surprise it makes its way into the, the strip club buildings. Shock supply surprise it makes its way into um, you know every every board boardroom build. You know like yeah. so I think that that particular energy is is among us, and I think collectively we are choosing to to address it. Um, and, you know, I think f 
yeah, in that, in that environment, I've, I've, I fa- you know, take a, I take a lot of pride in, and if you know me personally, you know that about me, like, and being able to, like, on, on my nights, this is how it's going to go. Um, and and not, and I'm not naive on how it goes on nights that I'm not there, and I'm not naive on what's what's happening a, around me that I'm mm-hmm. not necessarily in tune with. Yeah. Um, but I've but I, I think it's you know I have I have I've ever coworker this past weekend. Um, shouts out to Tabby Cat who just who just got her law degree, right? You know, and and I have a coworker who just got her kids taken. So oh, wow. so as so I've under, seen it all, man. And 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 I I think we collectively have created or allowed even this through silence um circumstances to perpetuate that that makes that option a, a valuable one honestly like we all we all see the um we can we can look at the inflation chart right and and, and see the things that we have to pay for are getting more expensive but like you know the audacity to ask for a livable wage is you know like that's laughable right and that's disgusting and then right. we want to say like okay cool in the name of my morals you know, you have to, these these are your options and digging yourself out of this deficit where um, I've, I've seen this particular option may, you know, give people the ability to thrive in life, you know, however we feel about what it is. Um, I've seen, you know, when, when focused, because I think to Bianca's point, man, it's, it can swallow you whole. Mm-hmm. And I've seen that happen. And, and one of my, one of my first questions that I'll ask, especially with like first night, you know, first night, work, you know, entertainers or coworkers or whatever is like, so what are you gonna be when you grow up? And 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 some of that starts to build a relationship of, you know, yeah. every few months or so, you know, um man, so how's that how's that in. how's that thing going? You know, right. um, you know, you're you're nodding your head because there are a lot of things that he said that you relate to. One, and I'm glad you mentioned this because as a DJ, you have a lot of control. I didn't I didn't yes. realize that. And you hear that, and you relate to some of the stuff he's saying. He sets the tone. For me, you remember I said I was a cheerleader, the leader, the coach. Mm-hmm. And for me, what did we need? Drums, music. If you having a dance battle in the neighborhood, what do you need? Music. So the music for me changed my whole life. Look, I go to these. I give you a couple dollars. Can you just play this song when I'm coming out? And he'd be like, Yeah, whoops. And when I'm coming out, my son, um, it makes me feel, okay, DJ, I got you. It's going to make me go harder because that's the song. I've been practicing at home. I know the beats. I know when to turn. I need to do this and do that. That's right on there. But when you in a club and they playing some music you really can't relate to, let me just hurry up and get up out of here. Let me get my money <laughs> and go on to the next song. You know what I'm saying? So it changes the environment. The customers be happy. You be happy. The customers throwing the money, what you want them to. You get your money. You do what you got to do. Really? Okay. So when he, the DJ, would say, so what's your plans? Well, you know, what you want to do? Well, when I come back to work, I'm like, look what I did. I'm so happy that I'm accomplishing something. But you also got them stories. Well, I ain't looking and say, yet. I'm going to start that next week. Next week comes next month, next mm-hmm. year, and then continue to go on. Yeah, yeah more exactly. You know, once I get once I get this much in the bank, then I'm going mm-hmm. to start, you know. But I need to get this money first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you know, you just meet humans where they are. And that's where I think the church boy, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's funny, but. But I think that's where all that all that walked into the building with me, and you know I think it's it's helped it has helped me navigate this this world, and I think in in a, in a humane way is is how I like to feel about it. Mm-hmm. Um, re- recently, within the last two or three years, I've had the opportunity to, to facilitate men's groups, and mm-hmm. um, and and it it has humbled me and and given me an opportunity to reflect on all the time I had spent there before this ex- you know reflection, um, and. In times where I might have been 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 one of the bad actors, and or at least through silence, you know, allowed certain things to to take place. So um, it's been it's been a really interesting paradigm to to kind of now exist in in men's circles where we're trying to sort through um, the the impact of of you know toxic patterns and and how they you know I think personally impact us, um, and then impact our access to to a lot of the things that we we care about so. right right from your experience in um uh, in the strip clubs customers they see the dancers are they prone or how often mm. or is it common 
for them to try to, you know, expand on the the appearance of the girl, you know, see her afterwards. That I think there's going to be in in every in this field, it's going to feel like a deflection. But I want to frame it this way because I, f- I just want to remind us that there are just bad actors in every everywhere. So I think in the same way that there'll be some people that try to cheat the system in Walmart, bringing back things they want already or whatever. Um, you will have humans that are trying to cheat the system, right? Like they walk into the building understanding that 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 this is that here are the boundaries. Um, um, frankly, like in you know our, our ego um, will 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 make us want to push the boundaries yeah. because that you know not to justify it, but but in that environment you you come to work knowing that you're sorting, you're going to be navigating ego, um, and and then I think science. Sometimes makes may, will make a human push the boundaries in that in that moment, um, or at least um, feel like they would want to, feel like they should at least at least try. For, and and that's where I think really um, firm and, and and rigid policies and, and clubs that um, will enforce those yeah. become a part of. And that's you know for me I, as much as as much of this conversation we can have above the ground, the better because you do have. The ability then to sort through who these clients are, and I think science sometimes, you know, we're, we're when once our blood starts to shift, you know, from our brain to other spaces, um, we aren't thinking clearly, and we probably do need an, an entity or or a secure, you know, to to no, here here are the boundaries. Right, right. Um, and, and are you it. sitting up as a DJ? Are you sitting up above where you can see? Um, I've had you know different different vantage points. Mm, okay, okay. <laughs> you know, All I've right. had I've had you know times where I'm. I'm just my language is kind of bringing them on and taking them off. Um, I've had times where, like, in between songs, I'm marking dances of like, you know, just to kind of keep up with that part of the night. So, um, which which gives you a different ant, um, vantage point. And that that vantage point, I think, reminded me that that some of what's happening in there has to do with the fact that humans are naked, and and most of it has to do with intimacy. Uh, most of it has to do with the fact that we're, we're we're social beings, and not all of us have the ability to to request to you know not all not all of us have the social skills necessary to say to another human, "Hey, will, will you hang out with me and and know my cat's name?" Mm-hmm. And some people will gladly pay for that intimacy. And and mm-hmm. honestly, the um, when you hear this is the the longest profession, I think that that slither of space is what has. Um, mm-hmm been around forever not necessarily that people are naked not necessarily that there are sex acts involved but the fact that we as humans and as you know mammals need intimacy and um some some humans will glad so i've seen i've seen i've seen clients um men and women you know pay hundreds sometimes thousands of dollars and and not want to dance but really and truly just want you to remember their cat's name wow okay. and 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 be happy to see them when they walk in the building it okay. kind of makes them blessed that you know you're naked, and and that that I think that's where um, I kind of feel it's important to to know that those those buildings have have some have have a, have a value in the ecosystem. Okay, so. we're gonna take a break. If you see something, hear something, you want to comment on it, do it. We'll be right back. Human trafficking is a global issue that is happening locally. This is a problem that we cannot ignore. Being so scared on that hotel bed and wish I had my mommy. Going back into that feeling of, man, what what am I getting myself into? She rests her head on the prison to which she's chained. I'm standing there and I can't move. I can't go nowhere, I'm stuck drug into this spider's web and she can't untangle herself to freedom. Him telling me how pretty I am and what I, what I can do to trick guys out of money and where I, what I need to do and how much money I need to bring back and him take him making me change into different lingerie to take pictures of me to put me on Craigslist. Now I'm a product to be sold. Beneath this ground we walk is a hail of movement in a forced direction. Gridlocked, traffic lights, sex, Currency, 
bodies, stock, fear, monopolized, auction, blocks. Another job, he come another one, he come another one, and just being sold over and over and over and over. Minds groomed to be immune to pain. And you used to it, and you just lay there. Numb, desensitized, <laughs> innocence, drained. I went from that, that scared little girl, from in foster care, from being molested by my stepbrother, by my foster brother, to, uh, to being a lonely little girl stuck in a house. So scared with my mother to be in traffic. Welcome back as we continue our discussion on a uh, thin line between dancing and sex trafficking, part two. Uh, Kima Hamilton had to leave unexpected. Um, and we want to thank him for being with us. He brought a different perspective as he has worked as a DJ in strip clubs for 20 years. So uh, thank you, Kima, for joining us, and we understand that you had that other obligation, so thank you for giving the time that you did with us. Bianca is still here, and I am so grateful for that. He talked a lot about, um, you know, DJing and the music and Basically, from his perspective, having a little control on the atmosphere by what he says and the music that he plays. And as he was saying that, you were nodding. You were nodding. So you have seen this. It does make a difference. Definitely. So when you were dancing, would the DJ actually talk or just play the music? They would do both. Okay. Sometimes they even come on a stage to introduce the next act or the next person that's coming on. They would actually geek the crowd up if it's not ah. a lot of people that's spending money. They would like entertain them by saying, hey, go get another drink so you could spend another buck or two. Different things mm -hmm. like that and to encourage the men or whoever the clients was to spend, to engage with the women and go on and on. Why? So it's good to have a good relationship with the DJ, right? Yes, it is. Because <laughs> depending on how you and a DJ relationship is, when you up to, you know, do your dance, mm -hmm. it could be a boring song or a good song. It could be you don't want to be up there and you dance to rap and R&B. You get up there to some cowboy music. All You'd right. be like, um, okay, I can't relate to this, but let me hurry up and get it over with. Right. You won't feel so passionate about it. Versus a song that you know you probably ain't rehearsed. You probably already danced to it two, three, four times. You're going to be like, oh, okay, I know when to make a move. I know when to do this. I know that I like this move at mm -hmm. this time to go from there. Okay. He also spoke on most of the um, strip clubs that he was involved with did not necessarily um, encourage the sex trafficking part. But that, from your experience, is that what you saw? That's something that happened just these last few years. Um, years ago, no, they was a part of it. So yeah. um, we'll actually pay you a couple dollars extra. And if it was like, if you needed somewhere to stay so you could come early to guarantee you to be there, we'll pay for your hotel. And we'll get you a cap if you need transportation to get you back yeah. and forth or arrange it. You can carpool. That's what we used to do. Carpool. Well, Bianca, I give you $50 in gas. Just make sure you guys get here. And I need you guys here by 6, 7 o'clock. Okay. Well, let me arrange the babysitter. Let me arrange some other things to go on. Y'all ready? We got to leave at 5 to make it their own time. Get mm -hmm. ready and go right up out there. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about, you know, uh, so you you saw the, the the sex trafficking part involved with the strip clubs. Girls being enticed. You didn't involve in that. You got out. You start your businesses. Um, and you give back. You form a group home to help others. You also talk to young ladies who may be enticed to get into stripping or the other things. Um, and you, I mean, you have a big influence because of your experience. You also go on the street sometimes. And do reach out. Tell me about that. In order to get the women and the girls that are more prone to get into this lifestyle, mm -hmm. you got to meet them where they are. 
And a lot of them are on the streets. A lot of them are in the schools. A lot of them you walk in past, living next door to. And what I like to do, I like to meet them where they at. When I meet them where they at, I could tell them, hey, don't look at me and think that I ain't never been in this life because I could have easily been out here with you. And can if I miss a paycheck or miss a meal, I might be out here because guess what? I got to feed my kids. I got to pay my bills. I got responsibilities too. So once I start talking to them like that, they open up and say, look, Bianca, I'm out here because my mama was out here. I'm out here because my friend told me that we can get some money and nothing's going to happen. We just get in. We can go home. Well, unfortunately, I'm still here. And to me, I tell them, I've been there. Yeah. I've done that. A lot of people try to influence me to go into the streets because there's more money in the streets than the strip clubs. I didn't. What do you want to do? And once I start talking to them, really get down to the bottom of it. It may take two and three, four times coming over there looking for her. But I know her name. I'm getting to know her a little more about her instead of just giving her something and they going, no, no, what's your name? How are you today? Yeah. How's everything going on out here? Because I got to respect her field. I got to, this is her job. This is how she take care of herself, maybe her kids, her family, or addiction, anything, or have right. a pimp. So you don't want to just go out there and be like, girl, you need to stop dancing. And this is why you need. No, you want to build a relationship with them first so they can feel comfortable with you. Then you start giving them what they need. And then once you start giving what they need, they're going to feel comfortable and say, hey, I really want to get out the game, but I don't know where to go. Wow. I don't know who to talk to. And if you build that solid foundation with them, they're going to say, do you know anywhere to go? Do you know anyone I could talk to? What should I do next? The biggest thing is trust. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you gain their trust. Yes, because... Once again, it could have easily been me. And once they start, Bianca, did this happen to you? Did somebody ever try to snatch you up or try to drug you up and different things? I'm like, girl, sit down, girl, let me tell you. <laughs> but this is what I did. But we know in order not to be in them situations what we need to do. I know I need to get out of it. Yeah. But like I said, I remember the whole 12 months I went battling back and forth at that time talking to them. They could be in that same course mm -hmm. of getting out, trying to just figure out how I'm going to get myself situated after the life. Because sometimes people don't make it out the life. Right. Some people say, hey, I'm just going to do this for a year. That year could be two, three, four years later. So like I said, I said, it ain't no real resources here in Milwaukee, but it's enough. If you want to get a little help, it's some here. But when that help not there, what you going to do? I like to build them up like that to be independent, not thinking that all help is good help. But when you look at it, all help ain't good help. Yeah. And they start telling me about they help or the people who attempted to help them mm -hmm. and the resources they attempted to get and where they are today with it. You kind of help them to have that plan B, mm -hmm. start thinking about that plan B, setting Just some goals. Just to start thinking. That's the first step, thinking. Mm -hmm. If you could think yourself outside of this game, outside of this drug, outside of these pimps, that's the next step. Then you go get some help, maybe some therapy, housing, whatever else you need, and you go from there and never look back. Or maybe, like I'm doing, be able to talk and give back. Yeah, yeah. Do you have some success stories? Yeah, I have some success stories, and then I also have some bad ones. Mm. Unfortunately, right now, it's more bad ones than good ones, but I know more is coming. Yeah. And I just continue to look at me and the things that I'm doing, that faith. I got faith that we're going to turn this around. Yeah. Is there um, a girl, a woman, who um, who just, you can't shake her? She's always on your mind. Yes. I got to, like I said, the young lady, Brittany. Uh, she don't mind me saying her name. Um, I remember Brittany from school. We went to high school together. Okay. She was a dancer. I was a dancer. You know, we love doing around African-American time, like February, Black History Month and different things like that. We always be having our little drills, our little time singing and things at school. And I knew she was struggling when we was younger. I just didn't really know because she was always older than me, like two, three years older than mm -hmm. me. 
And she want to get out the game so bad, but she lost her kids. She lost her mother. She lost her father. She don't have her grandmother anymore. So that was her foundation. Now she said, I lost everything. What's next? I don't care. Wow. It's you. You got to do it for them. Mm. Bianca, I don't know how. I told you how. But when you ready, you let me know what you want to do. And I, she called me. If I have the things that she need, I would give it to them. Sometimes she's, I want to see how you doing. And that's what you want to do. Okay, I love you, Bianca. And I know I'm going to get out this. Don't be mad at me. I know I said next month I'm going to stop. And I just give her her little speech. And she's coming. Sometimes it just take a little right. longer for others. Yeah. Because, you know, you just think of, and I don't know, know why this analogy jumped in my head, but just smoke it. Mm -hmm. You know, trying to kick the habit. Yeah. It takes several attempts before mm -hmm. you actually do it. And I honestly believe she's going to kick the habit, but it just got a hold on her right now because she ain't lost. Like I said, for me, my biggest will, my biggest why was my kids. Mm -hmm. She ain't lost her why. Now she got to find it in something else. Yeah. But once she do, I believe I'll be able to help her tell her story to other people to influence them or encourage them not to get in the game because it's coming. Excellent. Excellent. Before we leave, you've got to tell us how you got into the construction business. I got into the construction business is when I first bought my first property, I was looking for some black contractors. It was really important for me. I want to give back to my people like my brothers, my people that mm -hmm. usually won't get a job because they African American or they have felon or they not licensed or they don't have no certifications beyond it, but they do really good work. And so when I first started seeking help from them, they would give me these outrageous prices, $25,000, $6,000, $7,000. I'm like, to do, I could do this work for that. <laughs> And so I learned over time after getting beat three or four times out of fixing up my houses, I said, I want to get my contractor's license and then I'm going to pay them to come work for me instead of me paying out so much money and then actually save money. I went and I Googled it. I searched it about two days. That third day, I was a licensed contractor with the state of, wow. the state of Wisconsin and the city of Milwaukee. Oh, my goodness. I took my test. I spent about $800. And for me, it was worth it because now we focus so much on women doing different things in different fields. But what about the men? Okay, they already got so many barriers. They black. They are failing. They ain't got no income. They ain't got this and that. So many barriers. How can you help them? They But they good with their hands. So instead of just working with the women, how can I help you do something? What you know how to do? I know how to paint. Okay, well, you a painter. You a good, you a licensed painter now. We're going to say that. You want to talk business? Let's do business then. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I got a paint job for you. And they be so geeked up. And I'm, you ain't got no paint job. Okay, show me your skills. Let me see what you can do on that wall. This all your materials you need right here. And guess what? Did I tell you? I'm a licensed contractor. I could get you some more jobs. If you prove to me you know how to paint, I can guarantee you more work. Wow. And it's, um, we're going on two years old. Wow. That's excellent. So you have the group home. You have the construction company. Don't you have another business? I have an in-home child care center, <laughs> a daycare <laughs> with 17 kids. With 17. And boy, is that needed around here. Yes, daycare. And some of my clients and women that I work with from on the streets and in strip clubs, there are kids in my daycare. Mm. So they can go to work. They can take trainings and certifications and different things like that. Or grandkids in my daycare. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's a lot. You have accomplished a lot. Yeah. So it's one thing. I want to go to work, but I ain't got no babysitter. That avenue is open. I want to get my own house, but I can't afford it. I have a room available you could rent where everything's included. All you got to do is do what you got to do. No I more excuses. It's no more excuses. 220, no more excuses. And I'm trying to do my best for them not to have any more excuses. Very nice. Very nice. You are inspiring. I am oh, inspired. I you. really, really am. I, I love how your life has transitioned 
how you took advantage of the experiences that you've had for the good, how you are giving to, back to others, or as I say, paying it forward, helping other people to come up. You're moving forward and you're not forgetting who's behind you. Because I remember where I came from. There you go. And then again, I would like to say, and it may be a little different to some people, the same hustle and mentality I had when I was in a club, I still got it. I just changed it. Right. The same music that I used to move to and bow my head to and dance to, I still got it, but it's gospel. <laughs> the same people that I used to hang with, I still encourage them. I'm just not with them on a day to day basis. Mm -hmm. The same thing would be like, oh, you got to go make some money. Well, now that's the avenue that I can help other people make money with. So I'm doing the same thing. I never changed who I was. I just changed my environment, the people I was hanging with, the things that I'd done, and my mission and why. Yeah. You Only reframed it. I reframed it. Yeah. And I can honestly say, from my point of view, that next generation after me, which is my kids, mm -hmm. they ain't going to be dancers. They ain't going to go into that lifestyle because they are aware of it. And long as they're aware of it, they may or may not make their decision, but guess what? Mama taught me this. Nobody from the streets had to teach right. me the game because my mama showed me. My 2020, what I'm saying is, what you hustling for? There you go. For me, it's my kids. I like that. What are you hustling for? What you hustling for? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. It's been you. great talking to you. We have to stay in touch. Yes, I would love it. Bianca Williams. Remember that name because I'm sure you will be hearing much more uh, from her, and that name will be tossed around a lot as you yes. continue to sow into other people. Yes. That's awesome. Awesome. And thank you again, Kima Hamilton, who had to leave us, but um, thank you for your insight and your input. We appreciate it. And thank you for joining us for another edition of the 411 Live, Real People, Real Talk. I want to remind you, we are a nonprofit. If you would like to help us, go to our website, the 411 Live. Dot org, as I take a swallow there. And you can find uh, past episodes uh, on our YouTube channel, iHeartRadio Podcasts, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, we're all there. Thank you for joining us in our, our new season, season two. So we're happy about that. Again, I'm Beverly Taylor. This is the 411 Live. Real people, real talk.